Tom Clark's 6M Podcast is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to Tom Clark's 6M Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Clark, and in this episode, I'm joined by co-host Phil Lindsay. We have covered the Star Wars universe quite often here on the 6M. If you have followed the show for any period of time, you know this. You're already familiar. No, I don't have the list in front of me. I'm a terrible host. It's my show, and I don't freaking have the list in front of me. But, all right, so we've done the original trilogy. We've done the Disney trilogy, which we're going to talk about here today. We've done Rogue One. We've done Solo. We've actually done an episode on just Darth Vader, believe it or not, as a villain, as a character. We've done The Mandalorian. And that may be it. I don't know. I'm not sure. If you subscribe to the show, you'll go find out. Just go look for yourself, man. I'm telling you, just take the time. You'll thank me later. There's a lot of episodes here to dig through. Trust me when I tell you that. We're, we're quickly approaching 200, by the way, so it's all good. But what we're focusing on here today is the Disney version of the Star Wars universe, as we mentioned just a few moments ago. And if you're a fan of Star Wars, then you've been following this for a long time. And I guarantee you've got an opinion. <laughs> you could be very pro or very anti, but... A lot of times, man, it's not really anything in between. I'm not saying it's never, but mixed reactions, yeah, they exist, but a lot of conversations I've had, kids, have been pro or anti. So we'll see how you folks feel about it. Let's do this. Star Wars is an American epic space opera media franchise created by George Lucas, of course, which began with the 1977 film and quickly became a worldwide pop culture phenomenon. The franchise has been expanded into various films and other media, including TV series, video games, novels, comic books, theme park attractions, themed areas comprising an all-encompassing fictional universe. Star Wars is one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time. All nine of the films The original, the prequel, and the sequels to the original, get it straight, all nine films, collectively referred to as the Skywalker Saga, were nominated for Academy Awards with wins going to the first two releases together with theatrical live live action anthology films Rogue One and Solo, the combined box office revenue of the films, hold on to something for this, equals to over $10 billion dollars making Star Wars the third highest grossing film franchise of all time. And as we know, in 2012, actually October 30th, 2012, yes, it's been that long, Disney acquired Lucasfilm for $4.05 billion. And I would say they got quite the bargain on that one. Uh, We'll see what you guys think. But that, in a nutshell, is... The lowdown on Disney Star Wars. So, Phil, in what camp do you fall? Are you pro, are you anti, or are you mixed as a whole since Disney acquired Lucasfilm? Uh, I think I'm pro for the most part. Um, I I think even with the, the, the bits of the sequel trilogy that I did not enjoy, I still think it's something to be said about... Uh, getting the chance to go and see a star Wars trilogy at a movie theater, because I could not do that for the original trilogy. And I mean, the prequel trilogy was, you know what it was, but it didn't have the same excitement around it as a force awakens. And I think just being able to experience those three movies as they came out in the movie theater was cool. Um, and I think most of the stuff they've done for Disney plus has been excellent. Uh, uh, you know, Boba Fett is probably the weakest, but I think other than that, they've done some really great stuff for this for the uh, Disney Plus streaming platform. Yeah, dude, I'm with you. I I don't I bump into a few things here and there, and I didn't hate Boba Fett. I thought there were 
there were moments that dragged. I thought he was great, but yes. yeah, some of the storytelling is a little wonky in places and you spend a whole lot of chunks of a lot of time on weird moments or whatever. And, you know, if you want to blame anything, kids, for that show, maybe blame the pacing, perhaps. Yeah. I think the way that they paced it was the big issue. Uh, the flashbacks, um, some of the big set pieces they put in it wasn't really for me. But, man, if you're going to give us live action Cad Bane, not going to complain about it. He was great, wasn't he? Yeah, he was excellent. Uh, if you're oh. you're a fan of uh, Clone Wars and you're a fan of that that uh, animated series, then you're excited as I was to see Cat Bane on live action. Timothy Oliphant, I think is how you pronounce his name. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he was he was uh wasn't he the sheriff of the town or something? He was. I could be getting my character screwed up. Yeah. Uh, Cat Bane's the the bounty hunter with That's the right. blue skin. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, see that that goes to show you that I I'm in tune like with the the theatrical releases and and like streamers now of course, but a lot of that stuff from comics to Clone Wars to Rebels or whatever, I'm I'm a little hazy on some of that stuff, man. Yeah, um, I I can't say that I watched the entire series from start to finish, but I knew enough that when Cad Bane showed up on screen, I was like, that Cad Bane, he's all that guy is awesome. And and speaking of not being completely dialed in, Phil, that's one of the critiques, and we'll and we'll just tackle one thing at a time here, right? But Ahsoka, that's one of the big critiques that series received. Have you dove into that yet? Have you watched it? I thought Ahsoka was very good. Um, hmm. I I I think the my only real complaint about it is that it was a little bit short. I wish it was longer, but I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed, of course, the structure of it. And, of course, the effects are great. Rosario Dawson is freaking great in everything she does. I love her to death. Uh, but for me personally, I know a lot of people said this, so it's going to sound like I'm you know, bandwagoning here, I suppose. But I did have disconnect issues because I was not as up on the animated series going into this. So I didn't I didn't have enough context for a lot of what I was seeing. I mean, you knew about a lot of that already going in. Did you have any moments of not really, you know, realizing what was happening? Uh, sometimes, but uh, a lot of times I would just look it up and to see what it is I'm missing. But uh, I just think seeing some of those characters from Rebels and some of the animated series again in live action was really cool. Um, I think Ahsoka is a great character, and I thought they did a great job. Um, and some of the the shorts that they did before the Ahsoka show getting us interested her uh cameo in mandalorian was great uh but man getting to see uh general 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 thrawn oh so mm. cool uh such a great villain um uh, man and the stuff they've done with anakin i i would say that the greatest thing the disney acquisition has done is it's made both Anakin and Darth Vader that much more interesting. I think we've gotten some of the best depiction of Darth Vader uh, from Rogue One, the Obi-Wan show, and even some of the stuff in Ahsoka. It's just been really incredible. And it's been really cool to see uh, Hayden come back in and be accepted by the fan base. I think that's one of the coolest things we've seen in the last decade is just him being welcomed back and not having this like, stigma of him of being the guy that was the star of the prequel trilogy that everybody hated and he's in the suit like it's actually him he wanted to do it yeah he was he was really great in ahsoka i thought he was really great in the episodes he's in he was great in um obi-wan as well um ray stevenson as well deserves a lot of credit for the yeah. ahsoka show he was so good in it rest in peace to him as corpse um, and that is sad that we're not going to get to see more of him in that character because he was so good. What do you think? All right. All right so look, I I did not watch the series all the way through. Did his did his uh, storyline end or was uh, was the character still alive when the show went off the air? Um, yeah, there's a there's a bit with him in the very last episode, in the last few minutes of it that makes you think they're going to go back to him in the next season. And unfortunately, he passed away. So. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to recast the character or what, but he was just so good in this, in this show. Do you, I mean, what, what's your take? Do you recast him? Uh, it depends on what they had him doing in the second season. If they had a big 
chunk of the season already planned for him, then I would say go ahead and recast him. Mm. But if you know if you could get away with just letting his apprentice take his part and carry on with that storyline, then maybe not. But I, I don't see any reason why it's, you wouldn't just recast him if you had something planned already. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, and, and I don't want to gloss over because th- this entire episode is about the Disney purchase and, and everything that happened afterwards. So I, I absolutely don't want to like gloss over it or anything. But kids, if you are of a certain age and feels kind of at an in-between point, like, no, he didn't see the original trilogy in the theater, but he was around for the, for the uh, prequels and then everything after that. So it was just, I guess, somewhere right after the fact. Like for me, I saw the original trilogy in theaters including the first one. And I was like four years old or three years old, whatever it was. Yeah. But dude, I have memories of seeing it because that star destroyer coming across the screen in the theater is something as a kid, you never forget, man. Yeah. It's really good stuff. But here's the timeline folks. And again, we've covered all this in the archives. Go check it out. The original star Wars was 1977, May 25th, 1977 empire was 1980. Jedi was 83. And that was it. (laughs) If you like to read, there was comics, there was novels, there was a ton of fan films out there for you to choose from, especially the internet became a thing. Uh, Well, I should say when the internet became a thing, then you could see them on on the YouTube, wherever it was you wanted to watch them. But there was a bunch of nothing, a big fat bunch of nothing for 16 years until the prequels hit. 99, 2002, and 2005 for Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, or Revenge of the Sith. And then a whole bunch of nothing for 10 years. Now, yes, there were animated stuff. Uh, yes, there was continues to be books and novels and comic books. I totally get it. But it took 10 years for The Force Awakens in 2015, Last Jedi 2017, Rise of Skywalker 2019. And of course, those films came as a direct result of the good folks at Disney saying, hey, we got this Star Wars stuff now. Let's just go start making stuff. So since we're focusing on the Disney stuff here, Phil, when you when you heard the news that this purchase was happening, do you remember what your first thoughts were? Were you excited? Did, did you, I mean, what were, what were your takeaways from hearing about this? Uh, I was excited about the idea of getting more Star Wars stuff outside of the Skywalker uh, <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> well, so much for that. Um, <laughs> I, I I just was uh, excited uh, about getting more stuff that was outside of the original trilogy. I mean, we had seen the prequels at this point, but just getting to get some new characters and getting to see some new stories, I was really excited about that. Yeah, same here, same here. And at this point, kids, Disney owns everything. I mean, Star Wars Universe, Marvel Universe, ESPN. God, I mean, what else is that? I mean, I, I don't even know off the top of my head what all they own. It's It's freaking nuts. But yeah, I mean, they've, there's a lot of, let's see, if you go on to Disney, by the way, kids, if you are a nerd of any level to any varying degree, I highly recommend the Disney plus app for God's sake, go freaking get the thing. It's wonderful. Uh, Pixar, of course, National Geographic's on there. Hulu's on there. Yeah. Disney got some cash there, Phil, I'm telling you. So uh, we mentioned stuff that was not. Well, it's technically Skywalker Saga. Rogue One was 2016, and then Solo was 2018. Um, As we're bouncing around through this, we did the Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, and I think we were in agreement that Force Awakens was entertaining. Last Jedi had some interesting moments, but entertaining moments, and then Rise of Skywalker was, again, sort of mixed, if I recall our reviews correctly. So... As a first shot out the gate for those three movies, you know, despite fan reactions and whatnot, the effort was certainly being made to put this universe back on the map. Do you believe maybe they went too fast at any given point? Or do you think the timing and releasing these films was spot on? I think the releases were fine. I think the biggest issue is that they needed a director over all three movies that had a vision for all three movies. I think having a different director um, for Last Jedi and Force Awakens was the issue. Mm. Uh, and I, th- I think you just had clashing visions for what they wanted to do with the franchise moving forward. I think you needed somebody that 
had their idea of what they wanted to do, the story they wanted to tell across three movies. Yeah, they they didn't have a Kevin Feige. No, and I think that was the issue. And I, I think that that's what's helped the Disney Plus shows. You can see that there's a shared vision with Dave Filoni coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Dave Filoni was the creative mind behind a lot of the Clone Wars stuff. And so it makes sense for him to come in and he's got this idea of where he wants a lot of those characters to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the movies needed. Even if you were going to have a different director on, you needed somebody like Dave Filoni that was like, all right, this is the story. This is the beats. Like it, you can, you can, you know, paint outside the lines and do whatever you want creatively with some of this stuff, but it still needs to hit these beats. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. Keep them on track. Yeah. That makes sense. So there are upcoming films, kids, these guys, I'm telling you, they're going to keep churning out Star Wars content for our great, great grandchildren here. I believe I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm fine. I'm here for it. So upcoming films, uh, supposedly in 2026, we're getting to Mandalorian and Grogu directed by Favreau. Uh, let's see un an untitled new Jedi order film, Dawn of the Jedi film and new Republic film to be announced, uh, directed by various different folks, including James Mangold of Logan fame and Dave Filoni, of course, Kathleen Kennedy attached as producer to the Star Wars universe from here till the end of time, Phil. Do you have an opinion on that at all? Because <laughs> uh, I know I know a lot of that's mixed as well. No, I I I mean, look, long as the, long as the movies are good, I don't have I don't really care about these things. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I. I, it sounds like Dave Filoni is going to have more to do with it. I'm excited about that because he's done great things on Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like they're going to have the movie that's going to link all the Disney Plus shows together, right? Uh, yes, yes. And so, yeah, I'm excited for more of his, what he's going to bring to the table. Um, I'm glad that they're moving forward with Ray as a character. Um, can't say that I was all that thrilled about her being a Skywalker but I still think she's a good character and there's still more potential for storylines with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm down for that. I like her a lot. And uh, I I remember you and me both coming out of that trilogy, having like various different levels of frustration with how things maybe could have been handled versus how they were handled. And her story was one of them for sure. Yeah, I, I just think out of the main three characters from the sequel trilogy, um, they're all three very interesting characters and they found a way to end all three of their stories in a unsatisfying way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cause I, I think that Kylo's such a great villain and I thought that they hit all the right notes of making him a great villain in the second movie. And then they just undid all of it in the third movie for reasons I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, you know, oh, he's no, he's no Darth Vader. And and I know that that's not the characters. It's it's not really even any of the creative forces. I mean, it's hard to live up to that, but like, uh, you know, again, Phil, we're pro wrestling guys. I, I had a real difficult time with really understanding why is this kid turning heel? Like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really have enough. I, well, the, the dark side, Tom, it's the, it's the, the, not the emperor, but it's this other guy and he's big and old and crinkly and he's evil and there's evil stuff happening. All right. Yeah. But I don't know, Phil, I mean, I, I guess, and you could also explain a lot of it by saying he's got Vader's blood in him. There's always that. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea that, um, in this moment of fear and having distrust in what was happening, that Luke helped to push him to the dark side because if he wouldn't have came in his room that night and confronted him while he was asleep, then he wouldn't have ran off. And so that part pushed him to join in the dark side. Um, and then you had all the angst and stuff that went with it. But by the second movie, I thought when he when he killed Snoke, I was like, "Oh wow, didn't see that coming at all." Yeah. And and then he then he had the great line and stuff with Ray, where where Ray is still trying to find out who she is, and he tells her like, "Yeah, you're nobody." 
your parents were nobody. And Love it. I, I, I thought his delivery and all of that was great. And he was like, yeah, you can't trust anybody, but you can trust me. Yeah. Such a great villain monologue. And then they go out of their way to undo all of that. I just don't understand why. Yeah, there's a whole thing with Ryan Johnson. And then JJ came back and it's like, oh, yeah, I I don't know if I'm sure this is a very unpopular opinion. But to me, Last Jedi is the best movie of the sequel trilogy. And I just think they tried to follow it up by addressing all of these things that fans didn't like about that movie. And I feel like it was regressive in a lot of ways. I mean, for for as polarizing as Last Jedi is, it tried to be different. It dared to do something different with the franchise. It didn't just rehash a lot of the nostalgia that we got in the first movie. And that stuff was good. I very much enjoyed Force Awakens, but... I think the thing that makes Last Jedi stick out is that it wanted to do something different. It wanted to tell a different story. Well, it worked in that regard. Uh, I, when we reviewed the film, I, I told you then I, I thought the scene with the, you know, the hologram Luke Skywalker is one of the best moments of any movie that I've personally ever seen in my life. I freaking yes, dude. I because honest to God. You just believed he was there because you're like, if there's anyone in the entire universe that could do this, it is Darth Vader's freaking son, Phil. Like to this day, part of me's like, I wish he'd kind of really been there. That would have been awesome. But no, dude, that that made the movie for me. Yeah, I thought that was excellent. I think it was the, the coolest thing we've ever seen Luke do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that even is, is very divisive. Um, because people wanted to see him uh, act more like a master. But I mean, projecting himself all the way across the galaxy is a pretty big feat. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that scene was so cool. Um, and my biggest complaint with Last Jedi was just how they use Finn. Because Finn was in such an interesting place after the first movie. Mm-hmm. And then they just proceeded to, I don't know, do nothing with him. Again, he's one of those, he's one of the three characters that I thought. His his story arc ended in such an unsatisfying way. I mean, you know, you had your trilogy, you had your your trinity there, Ray, Finn, and Poe, like you had Han, Luke, and Leia. And when they established that in Force Awakens, you're like, all right, I can go with this. Hey, hey, kids, Tom Clark here. And did you know the very podcast you're listening to right now is available on boinkstudios.com. B-O-I-N-K, Boink Studios is the home of Tom Clark's main event, Tom Clark's 6M podcast, and Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast. Visit the site today for links to every podcast platform, social media, special announcements, and a lot more. Check out the site and bookmark today, boinkstudios.com. And then suddenly it's not a thing anymore. And you're like, wait a minute. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) Like, what do you mean? It's not a thing anymore. And then they tried to kind of make it a thing again. And by that time, you're like, I don't care now. Like you ruined it for me. Yeah, I I think a lot of people felt like they were so on a dream or something with Finn that never happened because they very much promoted the first movie with Finn with the lightsaber and people thought he was going to be a Jedi. And then, you threw the swerve at us that Ray is a Jedi and he's not. And then you try to undo it by the end of the franchise by having Finn say that he's force sensitive and just like, well, why couldn't he just be a Jedi? I don't, I don't know. Why could you, why couldn't you just establish that he was force sensitive and he was a Jedi in the first movie? Mm. I mean, I feel like they kind of did because he was able to use the, the lightsaber in the first movie, mm. but just give us a concrete answer by the second movie that he's a Jedi. And for all you Ryan Johnson haters out there, you probably are aware that there is supposedly a Ryan Johnson trilogy, as yet untitled, that supposedly is still in the works, but it's not evidently a priority. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, I mean, Phil, they must see enough in this guy to... to, And, you know, if you're Ryan Johnson, I I mean, I get it. It's a payday, but man, do you want to come back to do three films? Like, oh my goodness. I think if it's his vision for the entire trilogy, it could be great. Mm. I think the issue with Last Jedi and the issue with the the movies before and afterwards aren't Ryan Johnson. It's that Ryan Johnson made a drastically different movie than what J.J. Abrams wanted to make. Mm-hmm. That's fair. 
There's also uh, another trilogy, uh, supposedly in the works, David Benoff and D.B. Weiss, uh, and let's see, uh, uh, Weiss, best known for co-creating Game of Thrones. That's a big deal. And so uh, and so is his partner here, so like both guys. Um, supposedly a trilogy happening there. And then a Taika Waititi Star Wars project, still untitled. There's also an untitled project uh, by J.J. Dillard and Star Wars, a droid story, which is going to center around R2 and 3PO, of course. There's an untitled Sean Levy film. And, of course, there's Lando, which we may get to eventually. We shall see. And, kids, if by the time you're listening to this, we got news for you. Rogue Squadron was on, then it was off. Now it's back on again. So... (laughs) Patty Jenkins at the helm for that one, of course. I I think Rogue Squadron could be insanely fun, Phil, honestly. Yeah, uh, uh, wildly enough, I found myself enjoying the stuff that they've done that isn't reliant on Jedis and the Skywalker stuff the most. I think Rogue One is the best Disney movie. Yeah. Um, and Andor is excellent. If uh, If you're watching this and you have not watched Andor, excellent series i got to go back and give it I, i've got to dig in phil i think i watched the first three or so maybe four and then i kind of tapped out I, I, i'm just very accustomed to action i'm very accustomed to stuff and it wasn't like there's no jedi here i, I don't care but like i don't know man and it, i know it got like high praise from from older and new fans both which doesn't happen a whole heck of a lot sometimes here but I need to go back and give it a shot again. Yeah, you definitely should. I think uh, it starts slow, um, but I think the build up and the setup is just so good because uh, the show is is is, is basically about uh, building the rebellion and mm-hmm. all of the stuff that led all of these people that are instrumental into in the rebellion to getting to where they are. It's just so good. All of the characters, all of their character arcs, uh, make logical sense. Uh, it's 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 everything that I liked about Rogue One. Uh, mm. Everything feels like it has stakes. Uh, it's just so so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to go back and uh, and give it a shot here. Let's see. We'll also talk about the streamers, kids. The Mandalorian, three seasons of that show beginning in 2019. The Book of Boba Fett, as we mentioned, uh, began in 2021. Obi Wan Kenobi. Great fun series. Andor, as we said, follows that. And then Ahsoka. And man, as we record this, Phil, we're about a week removed from the the drop of the Acolyte trailer. I have not asked you this live and in person yet. Thoughts about the Acolyte trailer? Um, Really, really cool. Uh, It's cool to see something in a different timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing seeing something in a timeline where there are a bunch of jedis and at this point there are no sith the sith are a myth Mm. Um, and so i think a lot of the stuff that they're doing in the trailer is really cool i thought the poster was incredible um Mm. just that visual of the lightsaber and the the blood spirit on the wall so it looks like a red lightsaber really cool visual um but yeah a lot of really great um actors on, uh, are attached to this um having carrie ann moss attached to it she's playing a jedi yep. um having um what is the kid's name that played rue what is her name amanda steinberg i think that's her name maybe uh but yeah having her in there it looks like as an assassin of some type um a lot of really cool names attached to this um and I, there's a lot of really cool lore around that time period for star wars and they haven't done anything with that in the in the movies or TV shows yet. Um, and there's so much potential there. So I think it's really cool that they're doing something in that timeline. And I'm I'm excited for it so far. But I mean, I it's Star Wars. I mean, I'm 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 in at this point. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm in the bag for everything they do. Basically, I may not love everything they do like to death. But I've not seen I've I've not not seen something now. I I did not finish Andor and Ahsoka to be fair, but everything else I've seen, 
Uh, and plus, this Acolyte series is taking place 200 years before A New Hope. Yeah, uh, it's taking place during the High Pub- High Republic era. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, they have not they have not tackled any of this stuff at all in the TV shows or movies yet. So, anytime you do something new with the Star Star Wars franchise, I think that's a good idea because we've seen so much stuff either in a prequel era or in the uh, regular timeline just do something else man and like i'm not mad at seeing more of this stuff but i just want to see something fresh Mm. yeah a lot of a lot of the big talk about this for the longest time has been well it's it's the skywalker saga and it's gone on too long and i can't take it anymore and that kind of thing like i mean i i get it to a large degree but at the same time you know um that is what put this on the map, so to speak. So, I mean, you know, uh, not seeing those characters anymore. And plus, you know, the, the other generation, the original trilogy have, have aged out, you know, unfortunately the great Carrie Fisher is no longer with us. Billy D Williams, by the way, Phil is completely down to come back anytime they want him, <laughs> which is freaking wonderful. <laughs> Cause love that guy. But, uh, what was your thoughts on uh since we're talking about the streamers, what were your thoughts about the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi series? Uh Obi-Wan is probably my favorite character uh from the prequel trilogy. I, in a lot of ways it's it's his trilogy. He's the main star of the movies. I know mm-hmm. it's it's supposed to be Anakin, but the main hero is really Obi-Wan. Yeah. Um and I think uh if you're one of those people that loved Obi-Wan from the first very first movie like I did, um because Obi Wan was always the cool aunt, um, um, Jedi to me. Like, like Luke, we had to follow him along, and he we watched him figure it out. Uh, Obi Wan could ar- already do all the cool stuff, like Jedi mind tricks and all this other stuff. So I always thought Obi Wan was cool. Um, mm-hmm. And then we got a younger Obi Wan, and we got to see him do all of this stuff uh, for an entire trilogy. I was a big fan, and I was a big fan of uh, Ewan McGregor's uh, depiction of him. So. When I heard we were getting a show, I was like, oh, great. This is like one of my favorite characters. So, and it did not disappoint. I think it's one of the best Disney Plus shows. Um, I, I still think all the stuff with him and, and, and Anakin is excellent. Uh, the fact that he is like definitely afraid of Vader and he's so like grief stricken about everything that happened after the prequel trilogies and he's like in hiding all this stuff. So, when he he had the first confrontation with Vader, so so good. Vader literally tries to burn him. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and then their last fight, it's so freaking good. The their whole confrontation where he smashes the helmet, and he tells him, "I'm sorry for everything." And then you see the the red light raise up over Anakin's face, and he's like, "No, I killed Anakin." Mm. So good sorry it's just so good (laughs) you know you could you could make the case phil to be fair you could make the case that had the old dude old and of course this is all retro freighted kids so everybody relax but had the older obi-wan not allowed vader to kill him he wouldn't have been able to kill him on the death star you know what i mean because obi-wan always seemed to have his number in everything that we've seen so far Yes, uh, he's he's beating him, beating him convincingly in everything we've seen so far because he's his master. Um, yeah. But I yeah. I just think um, it also I just think when he does beat him on the on the Death Star, it just adds to everything we saw from the prequel trilogies and in the Obi Wan shows that at that point it didn't matter anymore. He was like, I, I've I've passed on my wisdom. Like at this point. It's over. I have nothing else to do here. Like, um, I don't know. It adds so much more to Obi Wan dying the way that he did. It's just yeah. such a great moment. Um, it's I, I've I've seen people say that it's it's uh, Luke's Ben Parker moment, but it's, it's hmm. just so it, it's so many things about it that work better. And and then when you add the stuff with Luke later, him using the same same lines. If you once you strike me down, you never forget me. All of this stuff is just it it's it's a circle. It, it all comes back around. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes it so good, right? I mean, that's what makes it work on so many levels. Um 
I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but you and I have discussed this as we review a lot of the stuff that's happened post Disney acquisition with this universe. Because I don't like to give haters a lot of airtime <laughs> on our show, but I knew from the second I heard, oh, there's women in the Acolyte movie. I thought, well, this is going to get ripped to shreds. Oh, boy. And sure enough, Phil, Phil, I just, you know, I, I guess I'm the 51 year old most, you know, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, ridiculous, maybe, I don't know, uh, gullible, maybe. Um, naive, perhaps. I don't understand why so many dudes. I just don't get it. Why do you care that there's women in a Star Wars film? Phil, to, help me understand this. Other than the obvious answer that they're all, you know, douchebags. Help me understand this. I, I don't understand it. Um, I think as long as the movies are good, I don't care who the main protagonist is. Mm. Um, we've we've watched years of a male white protagonist that it doesn't bother me that we're getting a woman or we're getting an Asian man or whoever else, or uh, it's fine. Long as the movies are good. I don't care. Um, yeah. And I, I think when people try to base their opinion on something based on, I don't see myself in the main character. Uh, it's just such a lazy way to consume entertainment to me. Uh, because if that's the case, I as a black man could have said that I don't enjoy a lot of entertainment because I sure. am not the main character in anything. And I think there's, there's something so selfish and cynical about consuming entertainment that way. Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I, I thought the same way with the, the Marvel's discourse when people were like, Oh, Marvel's is terrible. And like the movie was fine. What? I don't know. Yeah. And, and you know, for me, Phil, I, I equate a lot of this to music. Like, you know, I, I grew up listening to, you know, some funk to some R and B to some soul music uh, in in addition to, you know, I guess white bands, I'll call it, whatever you want to refer to it as. I mean, you grew up that way, too. and But I never recalled, well, guys, this band aren't white, so I can't enjoy this. What the frick are you talking about right now? Do you know what I mean? To me, it's that stupid, man. Yeah, I I just don't understand it. Um I, I just probably will never understand it. It isn't for me to understand, really. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. We're getting so much good um, content for Star Wars, more than we've ever gotten. And even if it's not for you, even if you just sit back and go, I don't enjoy any of this, I can't see my main complaint being, oh, well, there's women here. I mean, okay. you have you have to know that makes you sound a certain way, Phil, right? Wouldn't they have to know that makes them sound a certain way? It's yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I just don't get it. And I, I very much enjoy Ray as a character. Um, with all the stuff I said about Finn earlier, um, and, and them getting cold feet on just making Finn a Jedi. I didn't have any issue with the swerve of Ray being a Jedi and the story being about her. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I feel like you can go back and do stuff with Finn. Boy, would I love a Finn TV show. Uh, but I don't think we'll get it because they treated John Boyega pretty horribly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't say that even with that and then getting Ahsoka and getting some of the other shows. I mean, we're we're getting great things like Mandalorian as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be a male protagonist. It's fine. Yeah, I I I'm with you. I don't know if it's it's for us to understand. I don't I don't I just don't get it. I mean, I again, we're wrestling guys and and been fans for basically our I guess most of our lives, but like we're very accustomed to that nonsense. That that tribalistic nonsense and the back and forth and the weird takes and the hate and the vitriol. But when it starts, you know, permeating into other forms of entertainment like you know how they, when I say they, by the way, for, uh, Phil, I'm not referring to you, all right? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I know you know what you're doing, but you know a lot of pro wrestling writers have no clue really how, how to do their business. So a lot of the, the articles tend to sound exactly the same. And if Seth Rollins has a bowel movement, that's, that becomes a major headline because on a slow news day, they're doing all they can for clicks. It's, it's permeated into every form of entertainment. Like Kevin Smith could go on his podcast 
and say, I kind of liked Superman. And then the, the headline would be, you know, Kevin Smith rallies behind the Superman film and defends DC. <laughs> I'm like, he didn't say that. None of that happened. What are you talking about? So like, it's, it, it's absolutely in Star Wars, Phil. It's freaking everywhere. I don't think it's just isolated to one form of entertainment, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just couldn't imagine growing up and thinking as great as Leia is in the original trilogy, for example, Ooh. and thinking, oh, man, but but Luke's the main character and they're giving this woman all of the screen time. Like, because Leia is not a damsel in distress for the for those three movies. She's great. No. Yeah. Um. And so, I don't know, man. But speaking of, Young Leia and, and, and the Obi-Wan show is also excellent. Freaking um, great. She's so great. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, we've gotten so many great female characters in the Star Wars franchise. I don't understand the complaint. I mean, uh, Jen Erso is great in Rogue One. Wonderful. Uh, we, we've gotten so many other versions of great female characters. I don't understand what's the problem with them, with this one being the lead character. Yeah. I, I just, I don't understand either. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, I yeah. And, and, uh, unfortunately for as long as they're making these movies, that's probably always going to be a thing. Unfortunately for us. Tom Clark 6M podcast is sponsored in part by Radius Law Group. Everyday Radius helps individuals, families, small businesses, and nonprofit organizations throughout North Carolina, Florida, and Pennsylvania resolve their legal issues by providing effective legal counsel in the areas of estate planning as well as elder law and Medicaid. Radius Law holds the radical belief that working with a lawyer can indeed be enjoyable. So give them a call at 1-800-519-5667 for more information and tell them that Tom Clark 6M Podcast sent you. It is what it is. I mean, you know, we made the comment about how much content they're releasing and how they're going to keep going. What I enjoy about this, Phil, is that no matter what smattering of disagreement, smattering of of weird, overgrown man children there are out there, <laughs> <laughs> that it's not it's not, you know, causing them to stop. They're going to keep going forward, which I actually really like, man. I'm glad it's not going to prevent anything from being produced here. No. Um, cause I mean, people are always allowed to have their opinions. I mean, I, I know people didn't like Solo. I personally enjoyed Solo. I, I thought it was an, an underrated movie. I thought he was very good. And I thought that he did an excellent Harrison Ford impression without it being a Harrison Ford impression, if that makes sense. I think he was attempting to mimic Han Solo, but not necessarily Harrison Ford. Yeah, I, I think there were enough interesting characters and stuff in that movie to mm-hmm. get me on board. I thought Donald Glover was excellent as Lando. Um, I hope we do get the Lando series or movie out of this, but um, man, they've been promising this thing for a minute. We have no Ford movement on it, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's happening with that either. It's um, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, I think, Phil, that's one of those things that was on and then kind of off, and now it's on again as well. And and didn't Donald Glover come out at one point and say that he hadn't been told really much of anything about it for a long time, I believe? I think he did, but it's also a very busy guy. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Have you dove into The Bad Batch, by the way? Uh, I did not watch any of The Bad Batch. That's probably the only thing that's come out recently that I have not watched. I hear really good things about it, but I've not dove in yet. Um the animation looks good. There's been one season, no, three seasons. My goodness, already. Very cool. Animation looks pretty good. I may, I may have to eventually dive into this. Um, I mean, this universe is going to exist. I mean, in some form or fashion. Uh, I mean, yeah. dude. Again, you know, we've said this before about the comic book stuff, about the Marvel universe. If you had told teenage Tom that there was going to be at some point one day so much Star Wars content there was going to be TV shows and more movies and I'd be like oh that that sounds great but you know are you messing with me and then here we are Phil there's something being produced maybe not every year but at least every couple of years we're seeing some Star Wars content man what a time to be alive if you're a nerd dude I'm telling you yeah a lot of stuff (laughs) that I feel like um 
I, it'll pass us by like, oh, I didn't really watch any of that. But then I'll get to actually sit down and look at it. Like I, I sat down and watched the, the Tales of the Jedi stuff recently. And I was like, mm. oh, this is very good. Yeah. Uh, I think I watched it right before I watched Ahsoka because they have a short in there about Ahsoka. Uh, there's more than one about Ahsoka, actually. Uh, but yeah, the Tales of the Jedi stuff is very good. I mean, even the the uh, the other one that has the different uh, animation styles, um, Visions, that one's good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, man, that, that, that Disney app, it's, it's, it's just chock full of goodness when it comes to Star Wars, man. Have you checked out any of the Star Wars Lego stuff, by the way? It's pretty awesome. I haven't. It's so fun. I'm a sucker for good Lego stuff, man. Yeah, they've even got like galleries on here, like Disney galleries, like under the helmet, the legacy of Boba Fett. There's even a whole special on just the sounds of the of the Star Wars universe. It's very cool. Very cool. Uh, there's even like vehicle fly throughs and you just bring them up on the screen and it's like you're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, which is freaking nuts to me. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you can go to Disney World or whatever, wherever and, you know, go and, and make a make a lightsaber and be in the cockpit of one of these uh, big ships and everything. That just was unheard of when we were growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking lovely. I'm, I'm a sucker for this stuff, man. I still maintain, we said, we talked about it earlier, when the original Star Destroyer flies overhead in, in episode four, continues to be one of the greatest moments I've ever seen. Like so freaking and holds up. Nothing about that doesn't look real to me. The model work they did in those movies, man, those guys were just ahead of their time, dude. Absolutely ahead of their time. So let me ask you this. We don't know a whole, whole lot about how we move forward. Skywalker saga, feel it at any given time. It kind of feels like, Well, we're going to move on. And we're like, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's this thing. And we go, oh, okay. Well, now we're going to move on. We go, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's something else. So like in in your mind's eye, I mean, how would you see this moving forward? Do you know enough about novels slash comics slash stories that are being told in other places? And like, and if so, how would you like to see that adapted to carry this universe forward maybe? Uh, I, I didn't read all of it, but some of the stuff that I read from the Marvel's run was good. Uh, there was a really good, uh, Darth Vader comic book, um, for Marvel. Uh, and so, I mean, again, that, that was kind of one of my disappointments with the new trilogy is that they didn't go and use some new characters. They did, I mean, they created new characters, but they didn't go and create some of the new characters that we got in canon. Um, like it would have been cool to see luke actually built the the jedi order over um mm. it would have been cool to see like some of that stuff i mean i know we got stuff like uh some of leia's training with him uh in the third movie but it would just been cool to see some of that stuff happen in real time yeah that would have been cool what do you think about all the time hopping going on here do you bump into that at all or no no it doesn't bother me um I'm curious to see how far ahead uh, this new trilogy is going to take place from the rise of Skywalker. Um, Cause it seems like it's going to be about uh, Ray starting over and recreating the Jedi order, but uh, how far in the future is that? Good question. Good question. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, honestly, Phil, there's been enough years passing now. Like it's been, as we record this, God, dude, it's been five years since Rise of Skywalker. Wow. Yeah. So by the time that film actually hits, we could, it could be, t- it's probably gonna be like two years from now. So at that point, it's seven years. They could probably just run it in real time and there'd be plenty enough time passed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would just like to see something different than uh, Palpatine as the main villain as well. Mm-hmm. Just something different other than that. 
I mean, you could have done that if you would have uh, covered some of the stuff from the Dark Horse books or some of the stuff that was already out there. Um, I'm, I know that there are a lot of fans that read that stuff and was invested in that stuff, so they wanted to see it. So it would have been cool to see that stuff. Uh, I don't know, man. The sequel trilogy is always going to be one of those great what ifs, but we had to deal with that for years with the the prequel trilogies. And I feel like in a lot of ways, um, a lot of prequel trilogy fans feel vindicated now (laughs) Mm. (laughs) because I feel like coming back around the Disney plus stuff has kind of added to that stuff and made it better than it actually was. Hmm. I mean, I could, I'll debate that with you another time, but, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, at, at very best, I think that Anakin's storyline feels a lot more fleshed out now than it did when the, the prequel trilogies originally came out. I think mm-hmm. we've gotten enough supplementary stuff to add to it to make you care more about Anakin as a character. That's fair. It's kind of like how Endgame made like Thor, the dark world a little bit more important than it was before in various other films in the, in that, in the uh, MCU. Yeah. Uh, I, I think when you add Clone Wars and you add like what we've seen in Ahsoka and the Obi-Wan show, I, I think you get more of a, a better understanding of Anakin as a character than you do from just those three movies. In, in another, in another world, let's say that, all right, hard to know this. I get it. But we speculate a lot here, right? So let's say Lucas doesn't pursue selling the universe. I mean, do you believe that he, because he had always said he wanted to keep going. But, I mean, do you think we would have the the sheer amount of content? We, I mean, I would guess and say no. But how do you think that would have looked had he had he held on to it? I don't think we'd have had the amount of content because once the Disney machine got behind it, uh, they wanted to pump out as much content as possible. Um, Mm. But I also think that there's cool things that are happening, like getting a woman to direct a Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, We might not have gotten that if it just stuck with with LucasArts. Uh, Maybe, but I have to imagine that as long as it was there, that George was going to want to write and direct most of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just getting stuff like that, getting Forrest Whitaker in a, in a Star Wars movie, which I did not think that would ever be a thing. Uh, man, getting the great Donnie Yen, which is a, like one of the greatest martial artists. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. if you haven't seen Ip Man, it's just an incredible movie. Getting Donnie Yen in a Star Wars movie. I don't know if we get that. I don't know if we get some of the creative decisions and some of the things that we got from the Disney franchise if if it doesn't get sold. Carl Weathers, the late great Carl Weathers. Yeah, uh, he got to direct stuff for Mandalorian. We've mm-hmm. gotten to see uh, so many people come in and do things. I mean, uh, great Rick Famuyiwa also did a bunch of the stuff for Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if we still get that if it just stays with Lucas Arts. That's a good point. Yeah, because with with the purchase from Disney comes all these other creative minds who, you know, essentially grew up with this stuff or at least were familiar with to some degree and said, oh, I can't wait to do this. I mean, it always, you don't necessarily need to love what you're going to work with, Phil, but it helps to at least like it, (laughs) at least be familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that. Um, But we've gotten a bunch of new voices and and visions behind it, and I think that's helped it. Um, I kind of feel like it needed at this point, it, I don't want to say it's outgrown George's vision because it's his vision. It's his franchise. But mm-hmm. I, I do like the idea that he pushed it as far as he want, needed to go with it. And it was nice to see other people take on the mantle and do something different. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. And, and plus, you know, I, I think we were all so excited for Phantom Menace. And then... You know, of course, when it comes out, it's like, well, I don't recall there being tremendous backlash, but I remember myself and a lot of my friends who were around my age kind of talking to each other like, well, what'd you think? It's like, ah, I, I'm, ugh. because it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the, the bad part about it is how do you, how the, how in the world do you follow up Return of the Jedi? Well, good luck. So maybe that's partly to blame 
But I just remember going into the theater with uh, my sister, who was a kid at the time, and when you know the 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 the, the horns hit, the orchestra hits, that great John Williams score hits, and a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and boom, there it is on the screen. People were in the theater cheering, clapping, and then when the movie went off, we all just kind of left, and it wasn't like worst thing I've ever seen. But I was, I was like, eh, well, yeah. And then, you know, for me, two and three were along the same lines. Three was, and I, I've told you this before, part three, I was just waiting for him to turn to Vader. It's the only thing I cared about. Um, and that's me talking. Doesn't mean that it wasn't written well. It's just for me, it wasn't written well enough to me to engage me. I'm like, just turn the guy heel. Let's just go. So like I didn't have the experience that people maybe half my age had with that franchise where they're like they they look at the prequels as being the greatest films they've ever seen and then maybe aren't even that familiar with the original trilogy. I mean, but Phil, the point of all this is it's generational affair now with this universe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You can Passing be somebody it down. That, yeah. that yeah, you could be somebody that didn't grow up with the original trilogy and you started watching with the prequels. And that's your Star Wars. Um, yeah. Or you could be somebody that grew up with the sequel trilogy and that's your Star Wars. That's just what it is. Man, that, you know what? That's a great point. Because that film came out in 2015. Force Awakens was 2015. Mm -hmm. Dude, Almost nine 10 years, years ago. ago. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't really relate to feeling like the prequel trilogy is my Star Wars, but... Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely know fans that feel that way. And because of it, you know, they're very defensive of it. I mean, you know, for me, the, the, the thing that has always worked in this universe has always been, you know, good is going to triumph over evil at some point. And the most unlikely hero is going to be the one, whether it's Yoda Bouncing off the walls with that lightsaber, which was freaking great. That was a great moment. Or it's, you know, a poor farm boy who, you know, just it, it, it he's got no future. He's he's got nothing. Literally a dirt farmer, you know. And he ends up blowing up the Death Star. Like it, it's it's that and you know, Ray, kind of the same story. Like heroes who were like unlikely heroes coming from out of nowhere. That's the story of this universe, Phil. And like, to me, if they ever lose that, if that's ever lost for the sake of making a buck or whatever, then you've lost the universe at that point. You've lost what, what bring it to the dance. In other words, you know? Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, I mean, I think that that's also part of why there's disappointment around Finn because they hadn't done that before of mm -hmm. uh, having somebody that was a stormtrooper that turned back to the light. And you had, you had a chance to do something really interesting with that. And I, I think that they started it, but then they didn't really end well with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And like we said, man, there's going to be people who love this stuff, no matter what they do. And some people just can't wait to throw rocks at it. But, you know, some elements always have to be in place. I think you always have to have the droid element. It doesn't necessarily have to be 3PO and R2-D2, but it needs to be something similar, which they've done. Um, so, I mean, that's an important part of this. There, there are different, you know, I guess boxes they got to check in order to call a Star Wars project. On any level of success, in my opinion, and droids are one of them. I mean, dude... <laughs> the the cultural phenomenon that is the Star Wars universe doesn't happen to a large degree without R2 and 3PO. Can you imagine any of this without those two droids in the very beginning, dude? Yeah, they're a big part of it. I mean, say what you will about the sequel trilogy. BB-8 is a great droid. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, if anything, he seems to be, like, universally beloved. Uh, and even, like, Rogue One, K2S is great. Uh Really one of my favorite droids. Yeah, very good. It's Alan Tudyk doing the voice, right? I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love that guy. And then uh is it um in a soak? Is it R4D4, I think? Or R4D5, I think. 
Uh, yeah, he's great as well. Um, yeah, that is kind of a deep cut to a Clone Wars uh, series that he was the droid that helped Padawans build their st- their uh their lightsaber. Um, but I think it was cool that they added him. Hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's again, kids, it's boxes you got to check. Like you you got to have a Jedi at least one. Don't have to have it. Andor doesn't have any, right? But like. As look, as we continue to move through this, Phil, like, you know, Andor no Jedi's. I mean, at some point, at some point, names are going to stop being mentioned. The name Skywalker is probably not going to be mentioned. Uh, the name Leia won't be mentioned. The word Emperor may not be mentioned. Vader may not be mentioned. I mean, when we get to that point, then then you'll know we've truly rounded the corner. But I just wonder. A large part of me wonders, can they actually fully let go and not even mention characters in dialogue to any extent? You know what I mean? Like, cause I think for me in my, in my head, the way I view it is they want all the connective tissue they can get to join together. What we know for like guys and gals, my age and older, and then for folks in their teens or their twenties. So, I mean, do you, do you see it becoming a, a, a point where, this is a complete standalone Star Wars entity. No mention of any of the characters that you know, and they're not tied to anything else. I don't see that ever happening. And I, I really don't see the appeal of doing that because I think at this point, the great thing about um, these things with the shared universes and all this continuity is mythos. And if you don't mm. have this mythos to draw on, then it kind of takes, it kind of takes like the appeal away from it. Like, and I can't, I'm not saying that it can't still be good, but I think now that you've built up all of this mythos over 30 plus years, it would be a shame to not, you know, play off of it at all. Mm. I think, I think your point is well taken, especially in the end of the rise of Skywalker, when you see, you see those kids and the kids moving, I guess, a broom using the force. Yeah. Like, whew, what a great moment that was. Yeah, I mean, I I would say the same. Like, as much as I wasn't the biggest fan of Rise of Skywalker, I think the scene of Rey beating Palpatine and you have all of the voices of the Jedi egging her on, it's really cool. And that's because Mm. you have the mythos of all of these other Jedi. Uh, Yeah, I just can't imagine them moving forward and not referencing anybody from any of the other franchises. Right. Yeah, they'll have they'll be there some to some extent. It's kind of like the MCU too, Phil. You would have to think that, you know, standalone movies that don't mention Tony Stark's sacrifice, that don't mention the the snap or the blip, that don't mention, you know, events that have taken place. Kind of hard to imagine that ever happening in that universe either. Uh, yeah, that's true. But that's what I'm saying. I think these with these big shared universes. Um, and you've built up all of this um, goodwill. I don't see why you wouldn't play off of the mythos you've already created. Sure. Well, I mean, there's a lot more to come, kids, as we said before. And honestly, in this hour, we've only just scratched the surface of this thing. And, uh, you know, I didn't want this to become such a deep dive that it took us three days to do it. Because there again, folks, we've already covered a lot of this stuff in the archives. And uh, you guys should go check it out. I, th- I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it because we always do our best to make it fun and to be honest and to try to call things down the middle. And if we feel a certain way, we give it to you. And again, we try to be fair wherever we can. Um, do you have high hopes for this thing moving forward, Phil? I know you. we started this thing off on a pretty positive note, tried to stay upbeat the whole time. I mean, do you feel like that everything's uh, pretty copacetic at this point? What's your thought on it? I'm really t- interested to see what they do with Ray under a different creative voice and a different director. Mm-hmm. Um, very interested to see where they go with the character. Very interested to see how Dave Filoni brings all the Disney Plus characters together in one movie. I think if anybody can do it in an interesting way, it's him. And he's already started building something interesting with Admiral Thrawn. Um I think it's a lot of good stuff to look forward to. I think the Disney plus shows have shown that um, really the most interesting stuff they've been doing has kind of been the serial stuff and not the movies. Mm, Yeah. Good call. Good call. Well, kids, uh, there's your show. 
And if you're Star Wars guys like we are, then hopefully you're on board and you're checking this out and you're enjoying, you know, giving it a chance at least. And to all you wackadoodle haters out there, I'll say this. During this entire hour, I've been watching A New Hope in its original form, Sans Special Effects Edition. This is the way God and nature intended for a man to watch this movie. And I've been watching it on a computer screen this whole time. And no, no one took it away from me. And I still have it. So for all you wackadoodles out there who hate women and you're not really keen on minorities and they're mucking up your favorite white guy universe, well, I got news for you. First of all, you suck. Number two, no one took away your trilogy. Go watch it. Be happy. Find another hobby if you need to. Stop hating everything. Man alive. Get a life. Uh, Phyllis, try to take this home, my friend. <laughs> Give me your last word on Disney Star Wars. Uh, you know, I, I feel like it's easy to be upset because in a lot of ways, Disney feels like the evil corporation. They're gobbling up all the things that people love. Mm. And so coming straight out the gate, people want to be negative about it. But um, outside of how divisive the, the sequel trilogy is, I think they've given us a lot of good Star Wars content. Mm. I like how you took the high road and I'm name calling over here. I'm, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you make a good point. You're right. Evil Empire. Well, pun intended here, right? I mean, you're, dude, you're right. It's like the New York Yankees at this point. Like, they're so big. Disney is so big. It's such a bloated entity at this point. Like, you're right. I think you're dead on with that. Yeah, so. I mean, I mean, I haven't enjoyed everything Disney has done with the franchise, but I've enjoyed more of it than I've disliked. Uh, you know what? That's that's me. That's me for sure. Yeah. Well, kids, there you have it. Again, keep your eyes open for future projects coming from these folks. Uh, I'm anxious to dig into that light and see what that's all about. And uh, yeah, I'm always going to be a, a, an original trilogy guy. That's who I am, but it doesn't mean I discount anything they're doing now. And I like to have fun. I love the Star Wars universe. So I'm down for whatever they want to give me. I'm always going to be here for it, much like the MCU. And we will see what happens next. But until then, that is the Disney Star Wars universe. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Check out our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 6M Podcast. We'll see you next time.